Hey, today we're going to talk about my favorite wood carving knife. Before we get started, if you would, please click on the like and subscribe buttons and let's get started. Oh, hey, thanks for joining me. So today I'm, I'm not actually, not at my workbench, not at home, uh, out in the park, I was just in, enjoying playing around with a little bit of spoon carving, just enjoying the morning. And so I thought I'd make a quick video about the knife that I use more than any other for wood carving. Now, my wood carving really got started with musical instrument making. And so I, I decided I wanted to try to make some musical instruments and I made a little teardrop violin that uh, instead of a scroll on it, I decided it'd be neat to have like an, an eagle's head carved on it. And so I, I made this violin and then carved this eagle's head. And then I um, decided to make a, well, it's, a, it's strung like a viola, but it's actually kind of patterned after a 16th century viol. And on it, I made a snake's head and um, made, uh, fangs out of bone and uh, a tongue out of uh, a wood called, I think it's pronounced Paduk, P-A-D-A-U-C-K. Um, I may not be pronouncing that right, but anyway, it's kind of a reddish colored wood and I thought that would be neat. So anyway, that viola. Anyway, that kind of got me started with wood carving and then that kind of, you know, led to some sitting on the porch carving meaningless gadgets and things. Um, and then I, you know, decided to carve some spoons, you know, so I like this is a, you know, one of the Celtic kind of love spoon things, you know, with the balls inside and the Celtic cross and the spoon. And anyway, kind of fun to do. And, um, you know, so I've tried a lot of different knives over the years. I, I've tried traditional wood carving knives, I have some of those. I've even made some of those. Um, I've used, uh, this is a Japanese wood carving knife that um, it's a laminated steel, very sharp, um, kind of a scandy grind. I don't think the Japanese call it that, but it's, it's kind of like a scandy grind in that there's just one bevel all the way to the edge. So it's a very acute edge. And this works pretty good, but the handle's kind of dinky and it's, I don't know. I just don't enjoy using it. And then I, I, uh, I have a, a, a flex cut Whittling Jack, I think it's called. It's the three blade version that has, you know, three sizes of blades and they are all very sharp and and really nice to use, especially, you know, if you're, like if I go out camping or something, I don't want to carry a bunch of stuff. I can just throw this in my pack and I've got something I can whittle with. And uh, then I bought a Amora. I think this is the 106. And I um, really like Mora knives. And these have a, a nice generous size birch handle and uh, this is also the laminated steel version. You can't really see it in the in the camera, but it's it's got the center hard steel and the softer outer steel, and again, very sharp. Tried that, and then I literally kind of stumbled upon a Mora 120. And I was actually at Cabela's, and it was in their bargain cave, which I don't think they have anymore. But they had this bargain cave where people things that were returned ended up in the bargain cave, and I didn't even know Mora. Uh, you know that Cabela's sold more knives carving knives, but I guess they did from catalog or something So I had this in their bargain cave and uh, it's the Mora 120 and it's also laminated steel and this has become My go-to wood carving knife for just about anything, you know, whether it's you know whittling on a spoon or um, Working on musical instruments the other day. I, I bought an antique banjolele as an old slingerland um, 1930s vintage banjolele and it needed a bridge so I took some hard maple and used this and just a few minutes time and carved it out and some of the things I really like about this knife the blade length is just right that you have a lot of control uh, more so I think than the 106 this unless I'm carving something pretty large that I need to really hog some wood off I like the shorter blade of the 120 so you've got good control this thing is you know, sharpened properly, it's just crazy sharp. And um, I use, uh, I'm gonna have to do a video on some of my sharpening stones. I'll, if this has gotten kind of dull, I'll start with a Washita stone I have that uh, really does a nice job of reestablishing the edge. And then I've got a, a translucent black Arkansas that I'll finish with on this that just leaves it just crazy sharp. So it's really pleasant to use. 
you know, also use the Mamora hook knives, you know, for carving the, the spoon bowls and stuff. I've got a couple of those. But for just my day-to-day -day carving, I really like this. So it's, it's a very controllable, very sharp, just the right size, good, good handle feel on it. And um, I don't put any kind of glossy finish or anything on these handles. I just kind of leave them as is. Um, the wood gives you some, you know, good tactical, tactile feel. Not tactical, tactile. Anyway, gives you good feel, good control. I really like it. You know, for whatever method you're using to carve this, uh, it's just really easy to use. And I think that speaks to the popularity of the Mora 120. It's, it is Mora's probably most popular wood carving knife. And uh, comes with a plastic sheath. I probably need to make something a little nicer. I, you know, these just kind of wedge in there with friction. And I'll put these, I've got a little tool bag that I put all my wood carving stuff in. And sometimes I'll find that these have popped loose. And so I probably need to make a leather sheath or something that goes in a little deeper, maybe um, holds a little tighter. I've seen some really neat sheaths made of birch bark. Problem is here in Oklahoma, we don't have birch trees. <laughs> so there's, um, if there are, I haven't seen any of them. They're, you know, the birch bark, I know I can even buy it on Amazon, so I guess I could just buy some, but um, the sheath is not my favorite. Anyway, not a whole lot to really cover here other than these, uh, the Mora 120, just a fantastic wood carving knife. If you're looking into getting into wood carving, be it, spoon carving you know just whatever wood carving whittling figures anything you want to carve um, the 120 is just a fantastic knife for that purpose and gives you good control it's got a really fine point so you can get really good detail work with it and um, good quality steel now there's another version of this that is not laminated it's just high carbon steel and and it, it's a 1% high carbon steel, which puts it in the family of 1095, and they harden it to around Rockwell, I think 59 or 60. So it's good and hard, but um, I don't know that the laminated version is necessarily much harder. Um, and the non-laminated version seems to be the version that Mora is producing mostly now. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, I wouldn't hesitate at all to buy the, the non-laminated version, the, the, you know, regular version. I've used a lot of Mora knives with just their high carbon steel and they hold in a good edge and they, they work fine. So if you run across one and it's not the laminated steel, you know, don't, don't be afraid to buy it, I wouldn't think. So anyway, that's it, the Mora 120. Um, if you're looking for a carving knife, I don't think you can really beat it. Hey, thanks for uh, watching my uh, channel. If you have any thoughts or comments, please don't hesitate to leave me a comment. And as always, thanks for watching.